Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends may fail me, foes assail me. He, my Savior, makes me whole. Hallelujah, Jesus, what a strength in weakness Led behind myself in Him Tempted, tried, and sometimes failing He my strength, my victory wins Jesus, what a I certainly am glad that uh, God doesn't ever leave us or forsake us, aren't you? Amen. Talk about a great attribute to consider is the faithfulness of our God. Um, friends, failure, family, forsake you, God never will. Thank God for His faithfulness. It's good to see you out tonight. Thanks for coming out on this Tuesday night. Pastor already mentioned it takes planning to be out on a Tuesday night, and that is certainly the case. And, uh, you know, just adding something extra. The services are, you know, we don't take a long time, an hour, hour and a half, plus drive time, so maybe an hour 45 or two hours, um, including everything, but it just, it kind of wears on you physically a little bit, and I get that. Actually, I have uh, one who is already out. He fell asleep during uh, Brother Taj's song meeting, which is uh, rather <laughs> impressive to be able to fall asleep while that, while that is happening, but he's out cold. So if you feel that way, you can't do that. If you're an adult, you have to stay you have to stay with me and stay awake. We're going to be in the book of Philippians tonight. So if you have your Bible, turn with me, please. Philippians chapter number 3. And if you're a child over the age of 3, you can't do that either, just in case some of you guys were planning on it. Philippians 3. And uh, we're going to be reading a couple of familiar verses and good verses tonight. And I trust it will be a help to you. Philippians chapter number 3. And then we're going to begin reading in verse number 13 in just a moment. Uh, let's start in verse number 12 in just a moment. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 12. Tomorrow night is the last night that we'll have services here. So 7 o'clock tomorrow night here. And I hope if you can come that you will. 
And then Pastor already mentioned that out on Miami Beach will be there um, at 7 o'clock for Thursday and Friday evening and looking forward to the time that we can have out there. We'd love it if we could, if we could, if this time, this Thursday and Friday, would give a good opportunity for us to get some more folks from that area to start coming out to the ministry there and let us continue to see that um, grow into um, a solid, reaching um, church there on Miami Beach. I'm grateful for the burden that God has placed on uh, your heart and pastor's heart regarding that ministry. It's a needful thing, it really yes. So this, this uh, could be a good opportunity for that. Philippians chapter number 3 and beginning in verse number 12. If you're physically able, stand with me please and let's show our public respect for the scriptures and also get the blood flowing to your brain one last time before you're seated for a little bit and I stay standing. All right. Philippians chapter number 3, verse number verse number 12 says, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, and he's preaching to a group of believers, uh, or writing rather, to a group of believers, and he says, not as though I had already attained, either or already perfect. Okay, time out, real quickly. Anybody else identify with that, where you would say, I'm not already perfect? Yeah. How many of you are already perfect? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> how, many, <laughs> how many of you are not already perfect? Okay, that's the rest of us. There's a couple here that have already attained, but we have not. Not as though I had already attained I mean, it means I'm not all that in a bag of chips. Either or already perfect, but I follow after. In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking after something. If that I may apprehend, grab a hold of that, for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have already apprehended. In other words, I haven't already reached the goal. I've not already received the trophy. But this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth onto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Father, please help us tonight to be able at the end of the service time, help us to be able to have the same heart, mindset, conscience, and be making choices like the Apostle Paul had and did. So that, Lord, this would be this would be our theme. This would be our desire. Father, for those who are here tonight who perhaps have slid into complacency or have lost their desire to see you do something in and through them, I pray that tonight you would awaken inside of them, inside of us, the heart of to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of you through Christ Jesus. Father, we, cannot, we can't manufacture that in ourselves. Uh, we, cannot, we can't emotionally stir ourselves toward that. I know that. We need you. All is vain unless your spirit comes down. So please, please do the work that only you can do. If there are some here who um, are still struggling with whether or not they belong to you or not. I pray that tonight you just, again, um, convince them of their need of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, of who He is and of what He has done and the fact that what He has done is for them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask these things of you, Father. Amen. Hey, thank you for standing. I appreciate it. You may be seated. You're probably not surprised to hear me say that I'm not a runner. That is, um, if given the choice of, hey, would you like to go out and run three miles? Or would you rather sit and eat a donut and drink coffee? <clears throat> ten times out of ten, I choose the donut and coffee. Anybody else uh, with me on that? All right. All right, just out of curiosity, are any of you runners? Does anybody here, you're like, yeah, I like, I love, I like to get out and just, just run. I like to go and just run. Okay. So the, yeah, Tasha's, man, things you don't know and you find out. Okay. So, um. So I enjoy getting out and running if it involves a ball or a sport or something like that. But the thought of just, hey, let me put on my shoes. And I have some really nice running shoes. You can tell they're running shoes. In fact, they're old man running shoes. The cushions are that thick on them. Um, the thought of putting those on and let me just go run for several miles just doesn't, it's not appealing. It's not something that I want to do. However, there is obviously benefit to it. And uh, there are some people that really enjoy it. Running was something that was a big deal back in the days that, that the Apostle Paul wrote this letter. In fact, sports were. You, you, may, you may not realize that the sports craze is not something that is new to our generation or to the United States of America. 
It didn't start, in fact, with the Olympics, but there were games before the times that the Olympics were held where nations would gather against each other and would compete in different uh, sporting activities. Wrestling was a big one. Boxing was another one. Uh, running was like the capstone of all of the athletic events, and men would, would, would work at their running and their abilities in this for years in order to compete in these games. I don't know, I don't know obviously, what the Apostle Paul liked and didn't like. However, I will say that when the Apostle Paul illustrated several things about our lives and about our spiritual lives, he used sports as an illustration. The other night I was preaching and I used um, sport. I used uh, sports twice in the service and I thought, oh man, I must, I must have, when I was studying for this, I must have had sports on the brain or at least it was easy for me to pull from. But it must have happened to the Apostle Paul as well. It's what he does here. He uses running as an example to, um, to illustrate something that is very, very important because it's something he assumes that most of us can, can connect with a little bit. And he uses running specifically. Now, in verse number 13 of Philippians 3, uh, he says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. The word apprehended means to have uh, grabbed a hold of, or the idea is, I haven't, I haven't crossed the finish line and received the medal. I've, I've not yet been given the, uh, the victor's crown. I, I've, not, I've not yet gotten the gold medal. I've not received the silver or bronze. I'm not done. Okay, now I love this about this passage, and this is important, and this is part of the reason why God put this on my heart for us here tonight. So please catch this. The Apostle Paul in this passage does much to kick apathy in the teeth. Do you understand what I mean when I say apathy? Apathy means, um, yeah, I'm just glad, hey, I'm fine with where I am. <laughs> I, I don't need to be any better than I am. I don't need to go any farther than I am. I can, I can just coast from where I am right now. I'm, I'm okay. All right. Now look, in the business world, apathy never gets you anywhere. In, in your family life, being apathetic with where you are right now is not any good. And the same is certainly true when it comes to living for eternity. The subject matter in Philippians 3, what is being dealt with is the Apostle Paul is reminding the people to whom he's writing, hey, listen, remember this, we're not just on this earth to live, make a living, and then die, and that's the end. He is reminding them that we are living for something that is much greater and bigger than just what I can put in my pockets or fill my belly with. I'm not living just for here and now, the Apostle Paul says. I am looking toward the day, knowing that there is coming a day when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return and all people are going to stand before Jesus Christ and there is a prize to be won for being faithful and just consistently doing what it is that God has me to do. Okay, now listen. If that was true in the days of the Apostle Paul, then friends, and especially brothers and sisters in Christ, the same thing is true today. Whether you're a young person or an adult or someone who's older in years, listen to me, we have not yet apprehended that for which we were apprehended. That is, we have not arrived. But we ought to be constantly looking and remembering the fact that there is coming a day when we're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I am very interested for me and for anyone that I have any ounce of influence with. I'm interested in our standing before the Lord Jesus Christ and seeing Him look at me and saying, Hey, Tim, Well done. Good job, Tim. You faithfully did the things that I had for you. You you continued on. You pressed toward the mark. Well done. I'm telling you, at that moment, if you let your brain see that at all, at that moment, 
everything else <laughs> that I pour myself into, my hobbies, my dreams, my desires, the, the finances that I worry about, and the way that I want to improve my living situation, none of which in and of themselves are wrong, but honestly, in that moment of making eye contact, if I'm able to, with the Lord Jesus Christ and hearing Him say, Tim, good job. At that moment, everything else just melts away. Nothing else matters at that moment. So the Apostle Paul writes and he says, look, we haven't arrived yet. And then he says, basically, let me share with you what it is that I'm doing. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. Let me share with you what it is that I'm doing to make sure I stay focused on eternity so that I can hear my Savior say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And in verse number 13 of Philippians chapter number 3, the Apostle Paul, when he says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I'm not done. But he says, this one thing I do. He's explaining to us what, what it is that he does. He says here, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And then in verse 14 he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So what it is that he does is he presses toward the mark. But in order to press towards the mark, he says, I've got to forget some things that are behind and reach forth onto those things which are before. Okay, time out real quickly because this is applicable to us. If you have any desire at all to have the Lord Jesus Christ say to you, well done. If you want to be faithful to God, if you want to be faithful to the Lord Jesus in service to Him and live a life that has meaning past the end of these days that we live on this earth, Days feel like ye, or, uh, years feel like days. That is the truth. I mean, how it flies by. So if you want to live a life that has meaning for eternity, let me tell you what has to happen. Same thing the Apostle Paul says. Forgetting things that are behind. Now, what, what is that about? Um, well, for the Apostle Paul specifically, he's speaking here of the, the, things that, the things that he thought gave him value. The things that he considered that he had a, as a part of his life that made him valuable in the eyes of God and in the eyes of other people. So the Apostle Paul would have looked at, this is, not, this is not us, I get that, but I'm explaining to you what he was thinking and will apply it to us. The Apostle Paul was, would have thought things like, before he knew Jesus, he would have thought things like, okay, my heritage, my family, I'm a Jew. My heritage and my family gives me value and standing before God. So he would have held on to his heritage and uh, the family that he came from. And the fact that he was a Pharisee, meaning he was a very religious person. And he thought, okay, because I have been a very religious person, that gives me value in the eyes of God. I have kept to the religion of my fathers. I haven't, I haven't gone to the left or to the right. I've stayed right on. I've done just everything by the book of what my, uh, what my, what my uh, colleagues and teachers have said to do, I have done perfectly that which I'm supposed to do. Okay, and he would have looked at those things and he would have, before he knew Jesus Christ, before he understood about living for eternity and serve, what serving Christ was all about, he would have looked at those things and those would have been the things that to him were gold in his pocket. That was what filled his belly. That was what gave him, in his mind, worth before God and value to other people. But then when he met the Lord Jesus Christ, and he learned that those things which he counted as so valuable were so worthless, he says here, in order for me to live for Jesus Christ, those things which I thought were so valuable and so important, those are the things that I have to forget about as they're behind me. And when he made a decision to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, he turned his back on so many things that to his mind were so valuable, to so many of his friends were so valuable, to his family was so valuable. All of those things he said, I'm not living for that anymore. My value is I'm following the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's important 
at this point. Okay. Now, if you're thinking at all, and I hope you are, even though it's a Tuesday night, I hope you can apply that to your own situation as I can to mine. While I'm not a Jewish man and my heritage really doesn't mean much, there's probably horse thieves back there somewhere, I don't know. While my heritage doesn't hold much value, there are things before I knew the Lord Jesus Christ that did hold value to me. They gave me value in my mind, either to God or to others. Money. Acceptance. Prestige in the field of what I did. As a young man that I could play ball better than other people. That everybody else liked me. That I could buy the things that I wanted to. These are the things that for me held value. I don't know what it is that holds value to, be, to, to you. It could be that it's uh, things like, like family accepting you. And above all things, that's what's most important. Or it could be the things that you could put in your pocket. Or what other people say about the work that you do. And those things are what hold all the value to you. Well, look. Those things are not in and of themselves wrong things. That is, being liked by somebody is not wrong. We're not supposed to work at being not liked. You understand what I'm saying? However, if you and I are going to live for Jesus Christ, then it, then it involves my forgetting things that are behind me. Those things which I counted as valuable, if I'm going to live for eternity, then those things are pushed behind me so that I follow Christ whether my friends appreciate it or not. I follow Christ whether my family understands it or not. Whether it makes me popular, makes me rich, if I become poor because that's what Christ calls me to do and I can do faithfully what Jesus Christ would have me to do and I die destitute, then I have died just exactly where God would have me to be. The Apostle Paul says, of all the things that hold value to me, there's nothing that holds value like hearing my Savior say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now friends, if I may be very straightforward with you. My family, we get to travel to churches all over the United States. We get to talk to people, and it doesn't take long in talking to people to find out what it is that in their mind gives them value, that gives them worth. The things that, that jive them, the things, the things that get them going, what it is their passions are about. And it's not wrong to have hobbies. And it's not wrong to want to be good at your job. In fact, there are many right and good things about it. But the moment that that becomes the motive for which I live, in fact, the Bible speaks to that whole situation, which is sometimes confusing in our minds. And we're given instruction to whether we eat or drink or whatsoever we do. Do you know what the rest of the verse says? <laughs> do all to the glory of God. Not for the benefit of what I can receive, but because I am doing it before my Lord. Okay, so the Apostle Paul here says, forgetting those things that are behind. And let me mention one other thing that the Apostle Paul isn't specifically mentioning here, but that's applicable because to certain people's personality, this, this is important. So, um, hey, right, right now, um, do your best. If you're, if you're struggling a little bit with uh, staying focused, right now is the time to key it back in. One of the things that sometimes have to be forgotten in order for me to, to, uh, to continue going forward the way I'm supposed to is past failures that have been taken care of. Sins of my past, whether when I was saved or when I was lost. Things in the past that sometimes grip us. Here's the deal. When they've been made right. So that if you have things in your past, by, by the way, if you have sins in your past that haven't been made right, you've not made it right with whoever you wronged, you've not asked God's forgiveness, then friend, you, you can say, well, I just want to forget about that, forget about that so I can go forward. It doesn't work that way. No, 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 no. But once something has been made right with the person that you wrong, and you've asked God for forgiveness, there are certain personalities, certain people that struggle with this more than others, 
Certain people uh, live constantly looking back at the failures that they have and think, I can't, I can't go forward because I made a mistake back there. And, oh, man, God could never use me cause, oh, because of what I did back there. I can't believe I did that. I, oh. And they kind of give up on serving God and give up on going forward because they're worried about what's in the past. Hey, listen to me. When the Bible says, when God says that He forgives those who come and ask forgiveness, when we confess our sins, that He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that means that when we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse. And that's exactly what He did, has done. Now, if you've made things right with, with others, made things right with God, and it's still something that grips you, that is one of those things that whether you feel it on the inside or not, by faith, by faith, believing that what God says is so, that's one of those things where, I, where you have to say, where I have to say, God, by faith, I accept that you have forgiven me. I forget by faith those things, and I'm not going to let that stop me from going forward. And then you pull your full attention on that which is before you, which is what the rest of the verse says here in verse number 13. Forgetting those things which are before, and I love this, and then reaching forth onto those things which are before. Reaching forth just has the idea of, um, of, of grasping, you know, reaching forth onto those things which are before. Monkey bars, you're grabbing from one bar to the next bar to the next bar to the next bar to get across. The, and and that, that's, okay, that's the way, that is the way the Christian life is lived. Let me tell you what we would like, at least what I would like, maybe you not so much, but me. What I would like is, in one moment, to go from being me, blah, to being <coughs> the Apostle Paul for the 21st century. In a moment. Can somebody give me a pill that will take care of this situation? Oh, uh, I'll give you a silly illustration. When I, when I was a kid, I was, um, I was fairly portly as a child. In fact, I was about as wide as I was tall. I, I've worn the same waist size in my pants since I think the fourth or fifth grade. So I was very, I was very large. I've never changed waist size. The long length has changed, but the waist size hasn't. Um, so I, I was very, I was very uh, portly as a child. And sometimes I would see myself in the mirror, you know, getting ready in the morning, and I think, oh, wow, that looks terrible. And I think to myself, man, I wish, I wish, I wish I could have, have muscles. Man, I wish. And then I would think, this is my imagination at work. This is to let you know what kind of strange person is preaching to you. I used to think to myself, I wish there was like, I wish there was like something that would happen where in a moment, I would have to exert so much energy that like in a 10 minute period, I would go from being really flabby to all of a sudden being the poster for GNC, you know, something like that. I used to think, man, if there was just, I, I mean, I would, I would be willing to exert as much energy as possible for 10 minutes to all of a sudden become huge. Okay. So if, you, if you're a weird person with a weird imagination, maybe you've imagined something like that or thought something like that yourself. That's kind of how we feel about the Christian life. Oh, man, it's just happened in a moment. Well, let me tell you, as we talked about last night, this is something that happens as I reach forth onto those things which are before. Okay, look, it happens that way for you and for me. Now, okay, with me, forgetting the things which are behind, those things that used to be so valuable to me, I say, okay, look, those that is not what I'm living for anymore. There is eternity to live for. That is not what holds value. This is what I'm after. He is who I'm following. To hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want to have happen. And then the Bible says, I reach forth on those things which are before. Just taking step after step after step after step. On occasion, having worked with teenagers for as many years as I have, on occasion there will be a teenager who will come to me and say something like, Hey, Brother Tim... Um, I want God to use my life. Uh, what, what, is it, what do I need to do? What, what, do, what do I need to take care of? What needs to happen in order for me to be used in a great way by God? And the answer to that is just do every day what it is you're supposed to do. And just keep on, keep on growing. Don't ever get to the place where you go, ah, it's enough. That's good enough. But instead, 
always reaching forth unto things which are before. Taking steps. And I will tell you, one of Satan's greatest tools in the hearts and lives of believers, he doesn't, he doesn't have to destroy you if he can just cause you to become satisfied with where you are. One of the things about revival is that when our hearts and minds get focused on that which is eternal and we begin to make decisions that for ourselves personally in our relationship with the Lord and then in our outreach and our care about things that are eternal as we begin to take steps then it provides us opportunity to grow ourselves and then help people that are around us to grow as well. And I will tell you, for those of you who are a part of this church, or if you're a part of another Bible-preaching church, if you yourself get to the place where you're, you're... Hey, I'm good. Everything's fine. Everything's good. But you're not yourself constantly growing. You may be involved little. You may be involved much. But if you're not moving forward, then could it be that you've grown complacent with where you are in your relationship with God and your care about those things which are eternal? I can't, I can't set up some, some goal. In other words, it's not, it's not for me to say, you should be doing this much. I, I, obviously, I can have ideas, suggestions. I'm very willing to take over anybody's life that wants me to. I'll be glad to tell you everything that I think. But what I think isn't as valuable, obviously, as what God has for you. But sometimes, listen, sometimes people say, well, God just didn't build me that way. Yeah, God may have you do that with Tim, but I'm just, I'm just not, that's, that's not, that's not God's call on my life which oftentimes is an excuse for, um, I'm just happy with where I am. I'm coming to church. I give. Everything's, I'm fine. Okay, look, look, look. Forgive me, forgive me. But think about what the Apostle Paul is teaching here in the passage. Forgetting those things which are before and reaching, or which are behind, rather, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, living with the confidence that I know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. I've been baptized. Now I'm reading the Scriptures. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a part of, of the church and the ministry, and I'm reaching out to people, and I'm just taking steps, and I'm growing all, all, all along the way. I, I'm deepening my relationship with the Lord, and I'm reaching out to people who are all around me, and I'm, and I'm constantly asking the Lord to grow me and show me things that He have me do and live by faith in regard to my finances and live by faith in regard to where I spend my time and how I, how I put my energies into life. And I'm just constantly growing and growing. And the Bible says, as I'm doing that, Paul says, when this is taking place, as I'm reaching forward out of those things which are before, I love this, I press toward the mark. The word press has the idea of all the energy that you have, everything that's inside, you are pushing, pressing, knowing that there is someone or something or things pushing against you still. I press toward the mark. Why? For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. To hear my Lord and Savior say, Hey, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And let me tell you, friends, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face. All sorrows will erase. So, bravely run the race till we see Christ. 
Are you complacent? Are you satisfied with where you are? Or are you having forgotten those things or continuously forgetting those things which are behind? Are you right now reaching forth onto the things which are before so that you can press toward the mark and hear your Savior say, my Savior say, hey, good job. Oh, good job. Good, <coughs> faithful servant. May God help. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray tonight that in our hearts, in our minds, that, that we, we would be aware of the complacency that so easily, so easily grabs a hold of us and lets us just be satisfied where we have fulfilled that which we think is enough, where we have, we have placed value on, on our religious activities the way the Apostle Paul would have before he knew you. Lord, I pray that tonight we would forget past failures and past victories, not dwell on those and live eating the meat of yesterday, but instead help us, dear God, to look ahead at the things that you have before us and to reach unto those things which are before us. And in reaching, help us to press and press and press. Though sometimes it may involve sorrow, sure. And it may involve difficulty, sure. And it may involve people saying things about us or not understanding why we would invest that way or whatever it is. Dear God, I pray that you please put it in us, in me, dear God, to press toward the mark for the prize of your high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Lord Jesus, I am sincerely looking forward to the day when I do get to bow before you. And it is my sincerest desire to hear you say to me that I was good and faithful in serving you. And so please do put before me, dear Lord, the things that I need to reach to. And for these who are here who would desire the same thing, would you please make plain the reaching forth while we continue to take care of the things you've already given to us. Help us, dear Lord, to reach onto those things which are before. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I bring these requests to you. Now with heads bowed and eyes closed, Two questions. Well, maybe maybe more than that, but not many. The first question is almost always. I wonder if there's someone here who would say, Tim, I don't yet know Jesus Christ as my Savior. Living for eternity is not something I can even uh, do, can't get, because I've not I I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I don't know that I'm God's child. But if I can know that, I would like to. And you'd say, just by raising your hand, Tim, please don't embarrass me, but please pray for me that I will be able to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior so that I can have my sins forgiven and live for that which is eternal. And you'd say, Tim, uh, please pray for me. Anybody like that tonight, would you slip up your hand? I don't know for certain that my sins are forgiven. I don't know that I'm God's child, but I'd like to or I have questions about it, please pray for me. Would you slip up your hand? Let me wait just for a moment. Okay, see that hand? You can put it down. I'll pray for you. Next question. I wonder how many tonight would say, Brother Tim, um, to be perfectly honest, I can see, when we're looking at this passage, I can see ah, that in my heart and life, at least in part, I have slipped into some complacency when it comes to just faithfully serving the Lord. And I see tonight that um, that's not where I want to be. And tonight my desire and decision is I'm going to forget the things that are behind. And by God's grace, 
I'm going to start reaching forth on purpose onto those things that are in front of me so that I can press toward the mark. And you'd say tonight, Brother Tim, please pray with me and for me that I'll do what I ought to do in regards to this, reaching forth onto those things which are before and forgetting the things which are behind so that I can hear my Savior say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. It's not where I've been or not like I should be, but it's where I want to be. And you'd say, please pray with me and for me. If that's true for you tonight, would you slip up your hand? It's where I've slipped into and I, I can sense it. I know it. Okay, wow. Well, God bless you. Good. Well, let's do this. I think, I think this is important. Brittany's at the piano. She's going to begin to play in just a moment a song. When she does, if you're physically able, if you raised your hand a moment ago and you're physically able, I'd like to invite you to take, take a moment and just talk to the Lord about it now so that it helps solidify it in your mind before you leave. So we're going to give, I'm going to pray like I said I would, and then when I'm done, Brittany's just going to play on the piano. If you raised your hand, I would invite you, if you're physically able, to turn and kneel where you are and just talk to the Lord about it. Then when you're finished, then you can get back to your seat, and when everybody's back in their seat, then we'll know that the, the time that's necessary for you to talk to the Lord about it has been, has been taken, and the pastor will come and close the service. CC's fit. Father, Please hear the prayers of your children as they come before you requesting uh, either help in this matter of forgetting things that are behind or perhaps asking you to order the steps in front of them, helping them to be aware or see. Or, God, for, for some, at least I know I've been here before, where I've had to ask you to, to crush complacency in me because it's, it's like a trap that I'm struggling to get out of. And so, God, as these your children come before you, please hear and answer according to your kindness and according to your faithfulness, according to your power. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask. With heads bowed and eyes closed, as Brittany plays, God dealt in your heart, you raised a hand. And I invite you just to turn and you know, talk to the Lord about it if you're able to. Now, if you're not physically able to, obviously, you can just bow your heart, your head, and talk to the Lord about it.